Namaste, everyone. Welcome and thank you for being in practice this evening. Um, today we are working with balance. So we are going to start by finding uh, our seated position. And uh, once you ground yourself, slowly and gradually gather your awareness, bringing it in with your eyes moving towards your spine. Relax your palms on top of your thighs and try to slowly start aligning your spine from the ground up. Let your eyes be soft. And today we start by rooting and anchoring the buttock bones. And once you can feel the base of your body supported, give yourself a moment to very slightly find a rocking movement side to side to feel both sitting bones on your support. So like I said, it's something very gentle. It's not a big, big movement, but it's an opportunity to notice those both, uh, both bones anchoring. And perhaps by doing that just for a few times, creating more awareness, feeling those bones and feeling the internal balance. Then you pause back at the center in between the sitting bones and lift up the spine all the way to the skull. We invite the back of the cranium to lift upward and we try to soften the neck the jaws, the tongue. Finding balance, which is dynamic. And because balance is related to the ears, we are going to try and soften the skin around your ears also trying to relax the tissue inside the ears. And you can even make a gentle like yawning movement to soften the jawline or just move the jaws from side to side. Touch into the flow of your breath, rising and falling rising and falling. And in that flow, find your home, your place. So balance is a precarious thing. And studies say that falling is the second cause of injury, at least in the US. And Normally, as we age, we lose balance. But fear of losing balance is related also to fear of letting go. So, there's also people who study dreams. And in dreams, actually falling is about releasing and letting go of the ego. Ego usually tries to avoid falling, right? It tries to hold on to. And um, it has to do with fear of failure. But in a dream, when the ego, the ego guard, let's say, is down, we learn to sleep, to fall. And in doing so, we learn to let go. So, it's important to learn to let go because if we don't do that, we end up gripping, clinging, and holding on for dear life. 
So today, the practice of falling out of balance is that with that, we achieve balance. And in this practice, we'll try and develop flexibility, which comes with those moments when we feel out of balance and we try to get back up. In this moment, particularly in our lives, with this pandemic and other challenges, we are experiencing a loss of balance, we could say. So this time of lack of balance is a call to change to a new way of living and an invitation to be that change in support of all beings. So today, as we practice our yoga, we learn to find balance in the midst of disruptions and we'll try to do so embodying the first and most important principle in our practice, ahimsa. Non-violence, non-harming with our thoughts, our words, our actions. So as we bring the palms together into the heart, an opportunity to bring our intention to visualize ourselves moving through the practice with the intention and the purpose we bring and to make from that intention a habit. Habits are stronger than intention. So the more we commit to our intention, the more we develop the habit. In gratitude for being able to join this practice and be together. Let's open with the OM sound if you choose to join, inhaling deeply through the nose, a big exhale through the mouth, and then breathing in again. Whenever you feel ready, head connects with hands and heart, the three together at the center. We release the palms into our laps, lifting the head and opening the eyes if they were closed. Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. If you're new to my practice or my teachings, I'm Karina and I'm moving into the mat so we start. If you came in a little later, I don't know if you can see, I have a blanket on top of my mat and we'll start with a few set of exercises to find ourselves in the practice first. So if you can put a blanket there, and we'll go from there and then we'll move more. So as I usually do in these classes, uh, in, when we come towards the evenings, we're going to come first into our baths. And it's an invitation to start the practice actually the same way that we end it, right? This looks very much like Shavasana. And when we take this shape, usually what we say at the end of class is that we let go, right? So today we are practicing the action of letting go, releasing a little bit, as we are okay with getting out of balance or falling out of balance and then coming back. So in this shape today, take a moment to scan your body, a short moment just to scan head, neck, shoulders, arms, trunk, pelvis, hips, legs, feet, and perhaps there's some tingling or sensations of any limb, perhaps being a little bit more sleepy as you were sitting for a while. I have my helper here uh, for the class today. And uh, as you do that, just notice and remember we are trying to embody ahimsa, non-harming, and we'll try to work with that throughout our practice today. So as we are here lying down, today we'll start by activating a little bit of our upper body. 
So stay there, I'm just going to switch so you can see. And keeping your arms alongside your torso, we are going to start with one shoulder. You pick which shoulder you prefer, it's the same. One shoulder moving down towards the same side foot and then returning to neutral. And then the opposite shoulder just sliding down towards the same side of your foot and returning to neutral. And sometimes because we are very used to the speed of the day or the things that we've been doing, even if we were not running or rushing, we tend to do things a little fast. So give yourself a moment to slow down. Like one of my teachers that I study with, he says, there to slow down and go one side and then the other and coming back to neutral each time, slowly starting to get a little deeper into sensing the neck, the upper back, the chest. One more each side, sliding the shoulder back down, sorry, coming back and the shoulder coming down and back. Now I'm going to add an extra move here. So let's say that we are starting with the right shoulder just for uh, explanation purposes. I'm going to slide the right shoulder down as I bring my chin to the left and then I'm returning with both to neutral. Then I'm sliding left shoulder down, chin to the right and back to center. And again, one shoulder down, chin to the opposite side of the arm, that's moving, coming back, then the opposite side, and returning. And again, shoulder down, chin to opposite side, return, one more, and return. Remember that we don't want to push or um, do things in a hard way, okay? Good, so now I'm going to add a little bit different from here. I'm going to open my arms to the sides like a T letter. And again, we are going to go both ways, one at a time. You can pick which one goes first. I'm going with the side that is closest to the camera first. So I'm going to extend that arm, sending my shoulder blade a little bit away from my body and then coming back to neutral. And then I'm going to do the same with the opposite arm. I don't have a lot of space to show that, but then I'm returning towards the neutral. Same thing, extending one arm out and returning. Opposite arm and return. Two more, we go one each side, one arm moving out, extending and back. My palms are facing up and the opposite arm extending and coming back. And again, I'm going to add the head as an added part of the exercise. So I'm extending one arm and the chin is going opposite way and returning. Then opposite arm, chin to the other side, away from the arm moving, coming back. Let's go again. Arm and head away from each other and returning, arm away from the head and coming back. Let's add one last each side, arm, shoulder blade, shoulder moves away, activating that side, back to center and the second last side, coming back. Beautiful, okay, now I'm going to bend my knee, slowly placing my feet on the mat. I'm going to extend my arms up towards the ceiling and hold opposite elbows. And in this one, I'm going to just slide both elbows to one side and then back to center and the other side and back to center. Slow motion to activate the upper body. We'll be working with balancing and using our upper body quite a bit. So this is an entryway to start warming up joints, muscles, ligaments. Good, one more each side. And now one more time, I'll add the head opposite to the arm. So my elbows go one way, my head to the opposite side, 
back to center, creating a little bit of a flow now, elbows to one side, chin to the other, back to center, going one way, and return, other way, and back one more time, noticing the breath, Inviting fluidity, beautiful. We release that. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, releasing, softening shoulders, neck, throat. And then I'm going to lace my fingers, bring my hands behind the head, and we'll take on the cat cow that we do many times in this class. So I'm going to inhale, arching my back, sending the chin a little bit up. And then with the exhale, elbows come towards each other, belly in, lifting up. And again, inhale, opening up. Exhale, bring it in. Three more, inhale at your own pace, following your breath. Exhale, lengthening the back of the neck. Inhale. Bring it in, exhale, and one more. Good, activating the core a little bit more. We add the twist, inhaling, opening up, feel that arch. Exhale, lifting both elbows towards one side, back to center, pressing through the feet. We go back to the arch, inhale. Exhale, lift over to the opposite side, back to center. Inhale, opening the chest, elbows out. Exhale, lift both elbows to one side, back to center. Inhale, exhale, opposite side. Good, I'm going to add a little extra here. Again, we inhale, we arch. With the exhale, I'm bringing elbow and knee opposite to one another. Back to center, inhale. Exhale, opposite elbow to knee. Back to center, release, inhale. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, exhale. Good, one more each side before we end. Inhale, I'm guessing you're feeling your abdomen a little more. Core is starting to be more ignited or opening up. Exhale, slowly returning. Release, release the arms for a moment. Take a deep breath in and the breath out, good. The last one that I'm going to take here is extending my left leg. I'm going to keep my right knee bent. I'm going to open both my arms to a T letter again. And like I said, this is the last. I'm going to let my right knee drop to the left as I extend my right arm out to the side. So there's an arch here and also an opening in the hip. And then I'm coming back to center and I'm repeating the same side three more times. I'm letting the knee drop to the left, opening my arm out to the side, returning. And again, inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale, returning to center. Beautiful, let's bend the left knee, extend your right leg. Now we go to the last side. So now I'm going to be extending my left arm away from my body as the left knee drops to the right. So I'm trying to do that movement, feeling a little bit more opening in the lower back, feeling that arch coming back to center. And with your breath, add three more, inhale, Exhale, there's more, of course, of a twist here. So go easy if your lower back is sensitive and you need to adjust that twist to make it more mild, okay? Inhale and exhale. 
Beautiful. Let's extend both legs again. Bring the arms alongside the torso. One breath for nothing, just to reset. Beautiful. And then from there, bend the knees, roll over to the side. And now you're going to take your second prop, <laughs> which is the bell for now. So I'm going to take a bell just to show you guys. And I already have prepared a loop. And this loop is going to be quite small. So you can see it's not really big. It's just so I can put my foot inside, okay? Once I have that, doesn't matter which side you choose first. Uh, you, may want, you may want to have an extra pillow or blanket perhaps. What I'm going to do is to come onto one of my sides, okay? And that extra pillow or blanket is in case you want to have it in between your face and your arm if you need a little bit more padding for the head. For some of us, depending on your body shape, it may feel like your head is too far down. So if you feel that, then you add a little extra there uh, for help, okay? Good. Now, part of balancing is to also find the um, little tricks that can help us, um, uh, I'm going to say physically, right? So in this shape, when we are like this sideways, one of the things that we want to do is to ground that side line that it's touching the mat or the blanket. And another thing that we want to do is to bring the back pelvis towards the front of the pelvis. So imagine like that backside like being against a wall and it's supporting you because usually we tend to push the glutes or the hips back. And that can be a challenge. So to work towards that, you can bend your under knee and have a little bit more um, surface there to feel supported and not like you're falling over, okay? So if this is happening and you're bending that underneath, then gradually with time and practice, you'll see that it will start becoming easier to extend and be um, more balanced, right? Like if we are standing, but sideways. Once I have that, I'm going to bend my uh, area leg and, or, and knee, and I'm going to hook my foot inside that little loop that I have, and I keep my hand holding that loop so I can, again, reset my body, sending the back pelvis to front pelvis and extending that aerial leg as I'm pushing through my heel. This is actually a posture that we don't practice a lot in classes. And it's really, really good to start developing the strength and the core needed to balance in standing postures. So what I want us to try and do is to really ground through the underside of your body, push through the um, heel that it's on your mat. Imagine you're standing on that foot and you really want to press through the center of the heel and the base of your toes. And after you feel that connection there and you're really sending the back pelvis towards the front, push through the uh, aerial heel and send that heel up, 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 igniting the inner leg to be super active, okay? So those muscles are contracting into the bones, try to relax the neck and the head, the face is soft, and if you need to add any props to this, please do, or bend the underside of the leg, okay? One more breath. Good, and then slowly bend that aerial knee, take that belt out, come onto your back for a moment, take a deep breath in, feel one side and the other, notice sensations, you don't have to put names on them, just sense it, and then we'll roll over so we can do the second side. I'm going to just switch so you can see me doing it from the front. So second side again, I'm going to use the support of my arm. I have my wall here. So um, the support of the arm or the pillow or the extra, um, the extra prop that you're adding under the head if you need it. And then once I'm there, remember you can bend the under knee if you need or extend, push through that heel. I'm going to loop my aerial foot. I'm going to put that belt it can be under the base of the toes or towards the heel. For this one, I usually like more towards the heel so I can feel the touch of my, um, um, the center of my heel into the strap, okay? And then from there, but it's your choice. 
And then from there, I'm extending my underside. So I'm creating a lot of length in the underside that is supported. Then I'm going to transcend back pelvis to front pelvis, back pelvis to front pelvis. You get what I mean, right? So that uh, back, um, back portion, right, or wall of my pelvis is trying to move into the front of my body. As I push through the aerial heel, I'm contracting those muscles in that upper leg and pushing up, up, up as much as I can. This is forcing me to use my core because my hips are active. I'm drawing my pelvic floor up and I'm trying to bring my floating ribs down. So instead of popping my ribs, I'm trying to lengthen them towards the navel. Keep pushing through that aerial leg. Don't worry if you're not going far or if you need to keep that aerial leg with the knee bent, it's absolutely cool. Remember Ahimsa, we practice it in the little things, taking care of ourselves with our words, our thoughts and actions. One more breath here. Good, and then slowly make your way out. Come onto your back for one more time. Good. Take a deep breath in. Keep your belt with you. We're going to use it again. Good. And then I'm going to, as you maybe saw, I open my loop a little bigger, right? So it's like just a touch bigger, I'm going to say, towards being hip distance apart and uh, maybe a touch less than that. And then I'm going to put both my legs inside that loop and I'm going to bring my belt all the way to the in my upper thighs. So my upper thighs are framed my, by my belt and I'm able to break into that belt and not see my legs wider than my hips. That's why I said maybe a tiny uh, narrower than your hips, okay? Then I'm going to open my arms to the sides like the T letter that we did before. And I'm going to ground the back of my pelvis, push through my heels, and again, I'm activating my legs. And even though this looks like, what is she doing? This has nothing to do with balance. <laughs> this is actually a very good way to activate core, to open the chest and to practice balancing in a different way, okay? So we push through the inner legs, we extend through the arms, and we try to connect again into the core as we really press through the heels and the base of the toes. Good. We are going to keep the arms as they are, and we're going to bend the knees, touch down with your toes, take a deep breath in, exhale, and then re-extend the legs. Same idea, I'm breaking into my belt, I'm pushing through the heels and the base of the toes, and now I'm adding an extra challenge. I'm going to bend again my knees, this time towards the chest, bring them both towards my right arm or your cat if it's there like that and then back to center re-extend bend both knees bring them both towards the left arm i'm not touching down onto the floor it's just kind of like touch and go back to center re-extend pressing the back of the pelvis down bend the knees Bring them out to your right, like if you wanted to touch your elbow, back to center, re-extend, bend the knees, both towards the opposite side, back to center. We are activating that core a little more. Okay, extra challenge. Bend your knees, bring them both towards the right. If you can, try to extend them both drop the left shoulder, drop the chest, bring the belly from right to left. If you're going to the right first like me, then bend the knees back to center, second side. Both knees towards the left, extend the legs. I don't have the place here, the space, but extend the legs out, bring the belly and the chest over to the right, drop that right shoulder, bring it back, bending the knees, bring them back to center. Good, extend, let's go again. Bend those knees, bring them to the right, belly to the left, chest to the left, extend the legs, stay there. Bend the knees, bring them back. One more time, legs up, bend the knees, bring them over to the left, 
extend the legs out. I'm pushing my wall. Good, then bend the knees, bring them back, back to center. Extend through the legs. Good, bend the knees, touch down. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Beautiful, let's take that belt, make it loose so you can take it out from your legs. Good, then roll over to one side, pressing up, we come towards the seat. Move that belt a little bit to the side. We'll use some of that later. And now we are going to also take our blanket out because break is over. <laughs> okay, good. Now from here, we'll create more activation for balance, okay? So I'm going to come into hands and knees. I know some of you are still preparing, <laughs> like me. Good, so after you have again your, uh, your mat the usual way, come into the hands and knees position. And we are going to be very, very mindful of our lower back. So we're going to try and keep the lower back expanding so it's not collapsing and I'm not arching. We are not doing the cat cow, okay? So I'm toning my abdomen in, my hips into the center of my pelvis, lengthening through the spine. I'm going to extend my right leg up and back, pushing through the heel. And I'm also going to extend my left arm. And we are going to count for 10. So we are going to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release. You got the idea. Now we are going to do, of course, the other 10. I want you to, again, be super mindful of the lower back not dropping. So we lift through the abdomen and we tone there. So we really develop strength to balance, okay? Left leg goes up and back, pushing through the heel, extending the right arm. Draw that navel up. And when you're ready, counting for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, extend, eight, nine, ten, and release. Shake it a little bit from side to side. Beautiful. Let's go from here, opening the fingertips a little bit to the sides of your mat, widening your feet also towards the edges of your mat as I'm moving my knees a couple of inches behind my hips. Tuck your toes, and we'll go up to downward, downward facing dog, sorry, as we come into our first perhaps of the day, downward facing dog, we give ourselves a chance to pedal the feet and walk a little bit, opening the chest, sending the chest towards the legs, pressing through the base of your palms, releasing the neck and the head, Breathing here with the awareness into the base and the foundation first, lifting through the inner arches and really digging the center of your heels down. It does not matter if your heels are touching down or not, but yes, the energy of the center of your heels is very grounding and it lifts all the energy that you need to bring into your body from the ground up. Then we draw the pelvic floor up. And from there, walk your feet a little closer to one another so they are hip distance apart. And try to keep your pelvis in a neutral position. That means that it's not tilted or dropping. So that pelvic floor is lifted. The hips are firm into the midline. And I'm going to send my right leg up. And when I send my right leg up, if I send it too high, then you'll notice how your pelvis starts to drop or tilt or your lower back starts to arch. So don't force that. See if you can keep that pelvis neutral, push through the right heel, and then we bring that right knee to the chest. Then we go back up. And again, right knee to the chest, then back up. One more, right knee to the chest, belly up, right leg up. And then bring that right foot down. We reset in downward facing dog. Got the idea? We go three times again. What I want you to do is to really be mindful of your pelvis. It's important for balancing. So instead of arching and dropping, draw that abdomen in, ribs down, pelvic floor up. 
press into the right foot, lift that left leg up. Notice if you're arching in the lower back, push the mat away with your hands. Bring the left knee to the chest and back up. Again, knee to chest and back up. Last one, back up and release that foot. Good, good, good. Take a deep breath in and release. Walk your hands back towards your feet. Good, in this one today, we are going to bend the knees, drawing the lower belly up into the chest so you can release your trunk, your neck, your head. And if it's available for you, maybe hands under the feet. We call it hasta padasana. The feet and the hands, they meet. But perhaps this is not for you today. So you can put the blocks in front of you and just touch your blocks. You can bend the knees, release the head here and the neck, and perhaps play with a little bit of extension for the knees and then bending again. So I'm just playing a little bit here with flexion and extension to create a little bit more of a, um, I'm going to say, flexible way to open up our hamstrings, okay? Just a couple of those. And I'm going to try and play a little bit with balancing towards the wrists instead of pushing into my heels. Just a couple of times if you're there. And then I'm taking my hands out and I'm going to bring my hands into the hips, roll the shoulders back, lengthen the heart away from the belly, press through your heels, we come all the way up. Ah, we are up to standing, beautiful, okay. Tadasana, shape for a moment, pressing through the feet. Feel your feet in your mat and find that connection with your internal balance. So from the feet, spreading the toes, grounding through the heels, lifting the inner arches, tone the legs, firm the hips. Remember, we want to bring the back pelvis into the front. So instead of creating a big arch in the lower back, we are trying to create more of a neutral spine. Good, and from here, you can bring your hands into your hips if you want to start. We'll play with balance. Pressing into your left foot, shift the weight, firm the hips, lift the spine, and bring your right knee up. Just to start, we'll bring our hands into that knee and we'll try and bring it towards the chest. Okay, lengthening through the sacrum. If you need a wall, you can always rest against the wall or touch the wall on the side if you need it, okay? Or the mantle like I have on my side or anything that you have at home. Good, if you are okay here, I just lost it for a second. <laughs> if you are okay here, keep firming through the hips and see if you can send your arms out to the sides like the T letter that we did when we were lying down. Lift through the spine. Firm the hips in, draw the navel up. Good. Option to send the arms up, parallel to one another towards the skies, keeping that knee that it's lifting as much as we can, firming the hips. Good, and then we slowly release. Shake it a little, awesome. Okay, I can see. Some of you there, beautiful. Now I'm going to press into my right foot. Again, I'm going to firm, so from the base, I'm building that stability. So it's a lot of things like when we were sideways, right? We want to firm the side of the body and we want to hug into the midline, hands to the hips. If you're ready to go up, left knee goes up, firm the hips in, draw the abdomen up towards the chest, roll the shoulders back. If you feel ready, hug your knee first, bring it in. And notice how, like I said before, balance is dynamic. So that foot that it's your base, it's possibly not at all static, right? So what we want to do as we try and do with life is to adjust to those micro movements, to those micro changes. If you want to go further, whoop. <laughs> We go out with the arms 
And we try to stay fluid and present with that base that it's helping us create this shape. And then arms up. If you want to, take them there. Remember, you have a wall, maybe a mantle, maybe a dresser, a bed. Use anything that you need. Spreading the toes. Press through the center of your right heel. And then release and let it go. Beautiful. Let's shake it a little. <laughs> nice. And let's go on to our block. So now I'm going to have my blocks right at the top of my mat so I can use them when I get there. Okay. Good. From the top of my mat, I'm going to, when ready, inhale, arms up overhead. Exhaling, we fold, Uttanasana. Inhaling, halfway, we lengthen, chest broad. Exhale, put your hands down, walk back, downward facing dog. From down dog, we'll take one plank pose, push through the heels, lift the underside of your torso, Coming down. Good, I'm going to do a modified cobra with, before we play with our blocks. I'm going to bring both my forearms in front of me with my palms one on top of the other. I'm going to tuck my toes, walk my toes in, so you'll feel how your thighs are lifting off your mat probably. So they are really active. I'm walking those toes as much as I can lengthening through the sacrum and I'm going to push into my elbows. They are not very narrow, so I'm letting my elbows be a little wider than my shoulders. And from there, I'm going to inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bring the forehead down. And again, inhale, push through the elbows, lift, draw the navel up, exhale. One more time, inhale, lengthen through the sacrum. Exhale. Good. Bring the hands under the shoulders and the toes are tucked already. Bend your knees. We go up to downward facing dog. Beautiful. From here, let's go with the right leg up and back. Remember, we don't want to arch the lower back. Firm the hips in. Draw the navel in. Doesn't matter if that leg doesn't go far. Bring that right foot forward. Back heel comes in and down, and I'm going to bring my blocks with me so they are framing my front leg. They can be medium high, they can be tall, okay? Good. From here, I'm going to straighten both my legs, and before we go into balance, we're going to first set it up. So I'm going to firm my hips into one another. I'm going to press both my heels down into my mat, spreading my toes lengthening through the spine. So I'm in a half lift here. Firm those hips into one another. Keep lengthening through the chest. And then bending the elbows, come into the forward fold. Back leg is very active. I'm trying to lift my back inner arch, drawing the lower abdomen in and up, and lengthening the heart forward. Two breaths here. One more. Good. Then I'm going to lift halfway and I'm going to walk my blocks a little further forward so I can have them for support, okay? I'm going to bend my front knee and your blocks can be, like I said, medium or higher, taller. I'm going to bend my front knee and lift my left leg up. So we're practicing a little bit of the warrior three, even though I'm going to modify it a little, okay? So firm, I want to firm. First, I want to firm my hips into the midline, draw my navel up, lengthen the front spine towards my nose. And as I keep that, so my lower back doesn't arch, I'm going to bend the front knee just a little and then re-extend. And again, bend the front knee and re-extend, pushing through that front heel. Again, bend the knee and re-extend. And now I'm going to add an extra challenge. Bend the left knee 
So now I'm going to try and keep my left thigh parallel to the floor. And with that, firming the glutes into one another, I know you can feel it. I'm going to again bend my right knee and re extend. Bend the right knee and re extend. One more time, bend the right knee, re extend. Send that left leg all the way back. Good, just move your blocks to the sides, put the hands down, we go back downward facing dog. Ooh, feel one side compared to the other. You can shift a little bit the hips from side to side, if you want. Draw that navel up, relax the throat, the neck, the head. Let's go into the second side. Left leg goes up. Left foot comes forward. Back heel moves in and down. And again, I'm back here with my blocks. First, I'm going to firm through both legs, straightening the front leg and bringing my blocks so they are under my shoulders. Firm the hips in, lengthen through the spine. Send that left hip back. Lift your back inner arch. And the more you can lengthen the heart away from your belly, do that. And then we fold over that front leg. If you need for this to keep your blocks uh, taller, please do. And if um, folding over the leg, it's not for you today or it feels bad in your upper back, stay in that tabletop position, okay? Good, we take a couple of breaths here. I'm squeezing my inner legs towards the midline, towards one another. That will help me create that stability through the core. And I'm trying to lengthen the heart away from my navel. Good. Then I'm going to reset the tabletop. I'm going to walk my blocks a little forward, a little further to the top of my mat. Bending the front knee, I'm lifting that right leg into the warrior three modification. Firm the hips again, draw that navel up, open up through the chest. And three times we're going to bend the left knee and re-extend. Try to keep firming that left hip in. It will want to go out to the side. Bend the knee, re-extend. And one more and come back. Beautiful, if you still have a little extra in you, bend the right knee, lift that right thigh so it stays parallel to the floor. Three more, bend the left knee, and release, reset. Again, bend the left knee, re-extend, push through the heel, drill the floor. One more. Whoop, good, re-extend, right foot goes back. Take those blocks out. We go back, downward facing dog. Ah, shake a little bit from side to side. Good, and we inhale, we take the plank. Lower. Inhaling, up. Cobra pose. Exhale. And we go up, downward facing dog. Good, bring your knees down. Take a child's pose here for a moment. And let's take a short break. So you can reset, find your breath again. Nice. Good, an opportunity today with fluidity bringing change by letting ourselves perhaps fall out of balance the way to practice bringing more balance in our lives Two more breaths we take here.
Good. And then we slowly come up. And from here, we are going to stand up. We are going to use again our two blocks. And I'm going to just set them both behind me so we can use them for support, okay? So now I'm going to start with my legs wide and I'm going to say what I'm doing. <laughs> so we are going to open the right foot towards the top of the mat and the left foot will be turned in, okay? We're going to do a short uh, sequence here. And again, we're going to work with balance. So first we want to ground through the feet. We are going to bring the back pelvis into the front pelvis. We lift from the front up towards the nose. We extend through the arms. Once you feel ready and stable through the feet, we'll come to triangle pose. So I'm going to lengthen out towards the right and then bring my hand either to the shin or the block if you want it there and left arm goes up. Good. Once I'm here, I want you to practice again that back pelvis to the front, spinning the chest and the abdomen up, sending the shoulders back. Feel the power of your legs from the legs you're lifting and that pelvis, like I said, it's moving from back to front. One more breath. Good, then I'm going to gaze down towards my right foot, catch my block, bend your right foot, and if you need to bring it a little closer, do that. I'm doing that for balance, for a space. And then we are going to lift into half moon. And in this half moon again, I'm going to try and work in paying attention to my base. So I may be a little bit wiggly, maybe I need a wall, maybe I need some extra help. And what I want to do again is to bring the back pelvis into the front, helping me open up the chest, playing with those wiggle <laughs> moments, and maybe adding a bend of the upper knee and catching the foot and going a little further into that opening and a little more challenging into that balance pushing the foot into the hand, opening the chest, sending that pelvis from back to front. One more breath. Then we release and we slowly bending the knee, return back up. Beautiful, release that, good, good. Now we turn the right foot in, we open up through the left foot. Good, back pelvis to front pelvis, extend through the arms. When you're ready, pressing into the outer edge of your right foot, lifting the inner arches, lengthen the trunk all the way to the left, touching into your shin or your block, pick the one that feels better spinning chest and belly up we lengthen the side ribs we bring the back pelvis to the front and we take a few breaths shoulders back instead of letting the right side of your side ribs lift up see if you can lengthen it down so we give more space into the underside of the torso good then i'm going to gaze down towards my toes catching my block, bending the front knee. I'm going to bring that foot a little closer so I can go into the half moon, pushing through the center of the heels, lifting through the underside of that right leg. And then again, sending the back pelvis to the front, pushing, pushing, pushing through the heels. Option here to bend the right knee, maybe catching the foot, playing with a little bit extra here, bringing balance, and it's okay to fall, pushing the foot into the hand, pelvis coming forward. Then we re-extend, bending the front knee, we return, and up we go. Yay, good. Okay, bring your feet parallel to one another. 
And from here, we'll press into the outer edges of the feet again. We lengthen the sides. Inhaling, we take the arms up. Good, and we are going to take a very extended and wide downward facing dog. So from here, instead of coming with my hands very close to my legs, I'm going to try and go far, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen through the chest, lift the abdomen, bring your hands down, and imagine you're taking down dog. <laughs> so then you send your hands a little further forward, not your hips, your hips stay over your heels, and release here through the neck, the throat, the head, pressing into the center of the heels, lifting the inner arches, spreading the toes. This is a very beneficial pose for your whole system. And some of my teachers say that if you don't have time to take any yoga during one day, this should be the posture to be doing if you need to choose just one. So lengthen, press through the palms, relax the head, lift that energy through your inner arches, and let go through the head and the contents of your brain. Let them drop. One more breath. Good. Now we'll walk the hands a little closer. And before we come up, we are going to try and bring our hands to our heels. So try and go there to hold the heels, roll the shoulders back, relax the head and the neck again. Try to make your sitting bones be over the heel. Sometimes in this posture, I'm just coming towards the computer. <laughs> Good. In this posture, sometimes we tend to let the weight move over. Uh, sometimes it's too much over towards the toes and sometimes it's too much over to the heels. So if you feel like your hips are falling forward or over, then you walk your uh, weight a little bit towards the heels. It looks good. What I'm checking. Beautiful. One more breath here. Try and relax that head. Shoulder blades moving down your back. Good. Okay. Before you come up, don't do it yet. <laughs> Take those hands in front of you. Heel toe your feet a few times until your legs are closer to one another. Good. And then put your hands on your hips and lengthen to come all the way up. Beautiful. Slowly coming up. Shake it a little. Really nice. And we are moving down into our mats, bending the knees. Have your belt close by. We are going to use it in just a bit. But first, I'm going to do my usual quote-unquote torture of the class. So I'm going to try and spread my toes. I'm bringing my feet as close to one another as I can. And then I'm sitting onto my heels. If you are following my classes lately, you know that I've been doing uh, or repeating steadiness with this posture. You can always put a block or a pillow in between heels and sitting bones and this will help you develop the stamina into holding this posture which is really really good for sciatic nerve, lower back, hips and the activation of the blood in the backs of your legs. Okay good. Let the hands rest. Take a deep breath in and out. Let's stay here, softening the face for a moment. Of course, if you need to get out of this, remember we are practicing the first and most important principle in our practice, non-harming, non-violence. We start by doing that with our thoughts, our words, and actions, taking care of ourselves. Good, then we slowly release that, untuck your toes and shake them a little, shake the feet, and we'll come onto a seat so we can extend the legs out. 
good. A little bit more balancing in a different manner now. I'm going to take my belt again, and this time I'm going to make it big. <laughs> so my loop this time is a big, big lasso. And of course you will adjust it as you go. So I'm always keeping my uh, buckle in front of me so I can see it and I can play with it when I need. And because I'm right-handed, I'm keeping the end of the belt on the right uh, side for me, okay? So put it in a way that you can find it. Good, once you have it, the back of that belt, so not where the uh, buckle is, but the, the other side, I'm going to put it I'm going to get in actually, and I'm going to put it behind my upper back, and I'm going to put it right under my armpits, okay? So I have my belt right behind my chest, under the armpit, so I can hook it there, and the other end, I'm going to bend my knees. I'm just going to open it up a little for me. Good. I'm going to bend my knees, and I'm going to put both my feet there. Now, before I do anything else, like I said before, I'm making sure that I can pull from my belt and I have um, a way to manage the distance of my loop, okay? Once I'm there, let's see, I'm going to extend my legs and I'm going to come towards, I need a little more for me, uh, I'm going to come towards Navasana. Now this time I'm going to put the belt at the base of my toes. So it's really at the mount of my toes, not my heels. And I'm using my hands, like you can see, on the side, so I can push with the base of my toes into the belt, and I can also press into the belt with the back of my chest and lift. This is quite a challenge. It's a balancing act, okay? So take it lightly, don't get too serious about it. I'm trying to ground into my sitting bones very firmly. I'm lifting through the front spine, sending my shoulder blades down my back, and pushing, like I said, through the base of my toes, okay? Breathing here, options if you want to add to this challenge, taking my hands towards my belt and I'm holding there and I'm still lifting through the center of the chest. I'm still pushing through my heels and the base of my toes and my inner legs, they are squeezing towards the midline and I'm lifting the belly towards the nose. Second challenge, if you want, you can bring your arms parallel to the floor and play with a little bit more of that balancing act, okay? So I'm really activating my whole body, my core, my legs, and I'm staying open in the chest, collarbones wide, shoulder blades down. One more breath. Anywhere you are, it's good either holding the floor, holding the belt, or parallel arms to the floor. Good, and then come back slowly, release, let go, Pre bring the heels down, take that belt out, extend through the legs, take yourself out, and shake it a little. Beautiful. We are not done with the challenges. <laughs> now I'm going to play with another balance before uh, we go down, and this time, if you are practicing yoga regularly and you want to play a little bit more, you feel more fired up today to play a little bit more, I'm going to suggest that you, if you have, you stay close to a wall if you want to play with going towards a wall. If you are not uh, doing anything like that, the practice that we are doing here is to bring the forearms down, to place the palms together or lace the fingers. And then from there, I'm going to grip my elbows onto the mat. We are going to keep the feet together for this version and I'm going to tuck my toes. And with my feet close to one another, I'm pushing the mat away to lift up into a dolphin pose or a down dog on forearms. So the elbows are very important in this posture. If they are wide out, that's not good for your chest and your upper back. So you want to check that your elbows, they stay under the shoulders. And if you need to reset the posture, you do that, okay? Pressing into the forearm, sending the chest towards the thighs. And here the head is free. So it's not touching down. Push the floor away with the elbows and the forearms. Bring that chest towards the legs 
And like I said, if you have a practice and you want to fire up and lift into the wall, you can do that or just work with one leg without losing the balance, then down, the opposite leg, pushing the chest to the legs and back. Either none or all, <laughs> or kicking up to the wall. I'm a little far, so I'm not kicking. But play with any of those versions. Take another breath. Good. And then if you are, let's see, if you are upside down in that headstand, let's say, without the head touching down, like I see some of you, try to lift the back of your spine. So make the back of the spine tall, 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 so it doesn't collapse in the lower back and then push through the heels up towards the ceiling. If you are just doing the dolphin, you can just stay there, walking the feet maybe a little closer to the chest or the chest a little closer to the legs. And then you'll come down into child's pose whenever you feel like you need to rest. Nice. Excellent, take a few breaths. Slowly resetting. Give yourself this time to come back. Even if you were just doing the dolphin pose, One more breath there. Good. Okay, beautiful. Super, from here, we are going to come onto our backs. If you have a block or a bolster, um, I like actually both. <laughs> so we are going to take a supported bridge pose here. So if you have the block, just bring the block any height. If you have a bolster or a pillow, which is a little bit more uh, soft for the body, you can put it under the pelvis. Once we have that support, we are going to walk the shoulders away from the neck. We are going to tuck the shoulder blades into one another. And we'll stay here for a moment. We try to work with opening here the lines, the collarbones, and walking those shoulders again away from the earlobes, giving ourselves here just a moment to drop the head. Soften the throat, relax the skin in the face. And let the pelvis drop into the support that you have and expand into that prop. Good. Excellent, let's take the legs up towards a modified shoulder stand. If you prefer to have your legs at a wall, some of you I saw, you had a wall there, so you can maybe take a breath or two like this with the legs up without the support. And then don't, you don't have to do it if you don't want just for me to show you guys. If you uh, prefer to take yourself out of this and move closer to a wall to take your legs there, please do. If you don't have a wall or anything uh, for you to support your legs, just take a few more breaths in that Viparita Karani uh, modified, right? Legs up. Beautiful. If you are doing a shoulder stand, I'm seeing some of you doing shoulder stand. Of course, that's another option. Try to bring the elbows closer to one another. And so they help your hands lift your hips up. This is similar to the other posture that we just did, which in which I said you want the back of your spine to lift, 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 lift. That's for the ones doing the shoulder stand. And uh, you want your inner legs very active. 
So they go up towards the ceiling through your inner heels, ceiling or skies. Good. Okay. Some of you I cannot see. So of course you take care of yourself and we are moving towards Shavasana. So if you are close to a wall, take that wall to take the legs there if you want to end in that manner or supine the way we started our practice, coming with your body onto your mat and giving yourself the opportunity to just release. This is the moment when we let go. the practice that we've been trying to move towards today, being okay with falling out of balance, trying to develop the flexibility we need in life for the moments when we experience unrest. And after committing with loving kindness to the practice, we let ourselves receive the jewels that this practice has for us. <laughs> 